So, today we're gonna talk about Just Listening by Mark uh, Goulston. Yes, Goulston. And it is a book about communication once again, because I really deeply like knowing about communication, how to communicate and how to do things and how to say things and body language and all those things. I really appreciate those things. I just enjoy reading this type of stuff. I don't actually know why, but I really do. Um, anyway, we're going to go through it after the intro. I think we're going to go through multiple summaries of that since I wasn't able to find a really long one, but we are going to see, you know, um, after the intro. But before I do anything, uh, first of all, gotta do this, you know, so that there's not so much uh, puffing sounds and stuff. And I'm going to get some blankets. Put away my key and get some, uh, okay, actually more or less towels. It's not blankets, but it is towels. Um, yeah, this is what we're going to do. And it already is better. You know, I hear that, I notice that, and it is not there. Well, anyway, I, by the way, also hope that 5% is enough for doing that. And I'm a little bit pissed if it is not the case. And I probably actually should do something about that. I probably should, like, um, deal with that right now and not afterwards. Because if it just turns itself off, then I guess also the other shit is gone. So I, I think I better do it, yeah. I think I better do something about it right now. But I gotta have to find, like, there it is. There it is. You know, this is the problem when everything is red. Not red, but uh, what is it called? Black, of course. When every single thing that you're having is black, every single cable, and then all the cable look the same and shit. It's not nice. Let's plug that in. So, and you should be recording and everything should be fine. It is a little, it's, it's, it's not that convenient like that. Of course, because I have to wrap things around that little bit there. But uh, but yeah, I think it is fine and it should be good to go. And there is also like this thingy thing there, which is yeah in my way. But anyway, so Just Listen by Mark Goulston. When I picked up Just Listen, this by the way is by Esra Rufino and it is a medium post. So you can also just have a look at it. I'm going to link it down in the description and also in the show notes if you're on a podcast, you know, if you happen to be on a podcast. And um, yeah, I think it is a pretty cool one since there's also pictures there, uh, which I think illustrate the whole thing relatively well. And uh, yeah, therefore I'm going to read. When I picked up Just Listen, discovered a secret to getting through to absolutely anyone by Mark Goulston, I was looking for something to help me connect with other people. At this time, specifically as a manager, I've been looking for ways to improve and connect better, but it is a theme that comes up for me a lot in both professional and personal relationships. Just Listen offers a few, uh, a slew of tubes, tools for anyone to use to connect better, listen more, and as the title says, get through to absolutely anyone. I'm no expert, but after reading this book, I am certainly more intentional about how I approach conversations. There is There are so many different tools and techniques that Goulston offers in the book, but I'm going to focus on just a few that are easy to illustrate in a summary. Many of them in the book have great backstories and illustrations that would be harder to really grasp without reading it. Which, which, by the way, I gotta have to say, like, it is the beauty of reading the book. You know, you get the backstories, you get just, in general, all the stories. And uh, the experience of reading the book is just something completely different than going through a plain summary that is only just giving you the facts. Because um, I would say, well, you know, I think it depends on the book, but there is a percentage of information and knowledge as a plain thing. So plain information, plain knowledge. And there's also going to be just some some other stuff, you know, some some stories, maybe some pre-explanation thing that the author thinks you need to understand the whole concept and stuff. So there's always going to be something, you know, and um, some books have more of that. Some books have less, have less of that, but still it just really contributes to the whole experience of going through the book and reading the book. And um, maybe through all those stories, those backstories, you remember those uh, particular lessons, those particular tools way easier than just going through it plainly, you know, and just also for the experience of just reading the book is just better, you know, uh, reading just plain things can be quite boring, you know, it depends though on how it is written and stuff. So I'll be summarizing the persuasion cycle, mirroring, being vulnerable, transactional versus transformational conversations and the power of thank you. The persuasion cycle. And there you can actually see there is a picture. The persuasion cycle is one of the first things that Goulston writes about in Just Listen. I think of it a bit uh, more linearly than as a true cycle, but it is a good concept to start with. When trying to pers persuade someone of something, especially when they are not interested, you have to listen to the person to effectively take them through these steps. The first one is persisting, or I'm sorry, resisting. Then is listening, considering, willing to do, 
doing, glad they did, and then continuing to do this particular thing. The book is focused on the first two steps of the cycle, taking someone from resisting to listen and listening to considering. And that takes us to one of Goulston's first tools, which is mirroring. And I already know what this is going to be about. It's going to be about mirroring body language, tonality, how people uh, speak, um, how fast they speak, how slow they speak, how high their voice is, how deep their voice is, and all those things. I mean, if you mirror that because people like other people that are like them, right, then it is already a good thing. And I've also kind of seen that when it is about texting. I mean, if you're texting with somebody, then I think it is also a good idea to just copy how they're doing things. You know, whether they're using emojis or just some text smiley thing, you know, whether they're using a lot of grammar, uh, so punctuations, like, I don't know, commas and periods and whatnot. Um, if they're using those three periods for, um, uh, for, for, for indicating certain thoughts, if they just use different text, if you just think about Snapchat, then you have different text boxes. Are they using multiple text boxes? Are they using one text box? And all those things, like, it is a pretty funny thing. And this is basically also one of the reasons why I want to read these things, just because I want to communicate in a very conscious way, I guess, you know, and by, and I think it will also just make my life easier. I mean, I mean like communication and being able to communicate uh, in a good way and, or also communicate the ideas that I'm having in a good way, is just always going to be good. It's always going to pay off, I guess, you know, because we are often communicating, whether it is just here on a podcast or whether it is with partners and potential relationships, whether it is love relationships or financial and or business relationships and whatnot. I think it is always a good thing to be able to communicate. And I've been talking about it just for, for a long time, but yeah, I think it really is. So the first one is mirroring. This technique is used to disarm someone and let them know that you're understanding and listening to them. We've all probably heard about forms of mirroring in the past, mirroring the way someone talks, their tone of voice, mannerize, mannerisms, etc. Or mirroring the way someone sits, stands, crosses their legs, etc. These techniques help to subconsciously connect you with the person you're mirroring. The form of mirroring that Goulson discusses is in just distance feels even stronger than this. He talks about a way to say exactly what's in the other person's mind out loud and ask them if that's what they're thinking. The goal in the end is to get this person to move through the first step in a persuasion cycle from resisting to listening. And I think it is actually very well done by uh, speaking off of their head. And if you can understand the person, and I really am looking forward to just seeing how he did that. Um, if you understand the person, then you can also structure questions in a good way and also statements in a very good way to let them think that they are thinking that as I'm thinking about so th this is the first point and the second point is just okay um, if I know what the other person might be thinking about or is thinking about then I can just in general give better questions and statements and on the other hand as I said um, letting, them, letting them think that they are thinking that quite even though it sounds kind of evil to be honest but but yeah <laughs> example Gulston's first example of this is extreme but it does help to illustrate the point he wrote about a situation where a man was in parking in a parking lot with a gun to his head, ready to take his life. The police uh, show up and the negotiations team ETC to try and talk him out or down. Talk him down, yeah. The negotiations officer, might not be his official title, tries for an hour and a half to calm the man in the car down with no avail. The situation is dire and nothing is working. Uh, enter new negotiation officer with some advice, he says to officer one. Tell him this. I will bet you feel that nobody knows what it's like to have tried everything else and be stuck with this as your only way out. Isn't that true? So I'm going to repeat it once again. I'll bet you feel that nobody knows what is what it is like to have tried everything else and be stuck with this as your only way out. Isn't that true? Question mark. Take notice of the structure of the sentence. It is fairly simple. I'll bet you feel isn't that true? The man in the car confirms still upset but confirms that this is how he's feeling and the officer guess <clears throat> goes at it again and um if and this is something that i've also i think seen in never split the difference by chris was which is indeed about negotiations and um in this case mirroring is indeed something uh, something else and it is something interesting and but as i said i think it is just plainly about first of all i think in the end you're guessing in the end you're guessing and the two good things that I've seen and I've read about that is that, first of all, if you guess in the right way, then um, then you can help the person understand him or herself better. 
which is always also a good thing if you're just talking to somebody that is feeling bad, like um, you seem to feel this and that and these and those, and they're then gonna be either like, yeah, indeed, this is the case. And they're just pretty maybe happy about that because now they exactly know what's going on with them. Or they're gonna be like, no, it's not this because it is this and that and these and those or whatnot, but it just also helps them to kind of just also figure out what is going on. You know, because if it is not that, it's probably gonna be something different. But you know, it just checks one box. Quite. So I think it is a pretty cool thing. The man in the car confirms, still upset, but confirms that this is how he's feeling. The officer goes at it again. And yes, I've read that already. Yeah, and I'll bet you feel that nobody knows what it's like to start every day believing that there is more chance than something will go wrong than go right. Isn't that true too? After this, the man in the car starts to relax a little. He's beginning to feel understood. The officer begins repeating back what the man is saying to confirm that he is really listening, which is also a really good thing. And, and it is the funny thing is I've also been thinking about it today because of some reason, but I don't know the context anymore, unfortunately. And it might have, might have been about just talking to somebody. Could have been, yeah. Yeah, I mean, probably, but, but yeah. And the thing is, yes, indeed. And people say it's like the last three or four words or some shit. And, and, and ex- I think especially exacting that exact same words, it's something incredibly good because then they know First of all, it is also some kind of mirroring then, once again, okay, he's talking in the same way as I'm doing. And second of all, they, they really truly know that you're listening and they really truly know that you've also understood that, you know? If they are like, well, you know, I did this and, you know, maybe I can give you an example really quickly. Maybe. I'm actually not quite sure about that. Um, I have been just, uh, I've been laying there and I've been just drinking some drinks and, you know, I felt really good about myself. And then you might be like, well, um... So you you have been laying there and, and drinking a bit and you've been feeling really good. I mean, I can really understand that. And then you just talk on and your shit and whatnot, but they then truly know that you have got what they've said. And it's just it's a confirmation. Yeah. After this, the man in the car started relaxed, beginning to feel understood. Officer being... Yeah, the officer begins repeating back what the man is saying to confirm that he is really listening. After some time, he got the man out of the car safe and sound. Although this was an extreme example, I could think about a few situations right away on how I could apply this type of questions to my own life. We often know how other people are feeling and what they are thinking, but we don't often consider putting that out there in the open. This level of honesty can be disarming and very useful. But I think it is very important. Um, First of all, also to this... Disting- distinguish, distinguish. I think yes, distinguish between, um, for example, uh, the way of communicating. Because if you just talk to somebody one on one, then it is always going to be something different than if you just text somebody. And you're always just, um, I mean, you're able to use tonality. Um, I, I mean, if you're texting to somebody and you're using sarcasm or sarcasm, whatnot, uh, you know what I mean. Then it could really be a good thing. You know, but it could also just backfire so fucking much. <laughs> just, just really, really, you know, because they don't know, you know, because they don't hear you. And, and I mean, in, in general, like some people do have a hard time with sarcasm or sarcasm or however you pronounce it. I don't care, but also don't know. And the thing is, therefore, uh, yeah, think about the way of communication, the medium of communication. Is it air? Is it the interwebs? Is it whatnot? And um, yes. But yeah, of course. And I think it also depends on how you structuring it. And I think this is kind of the just most important part there, I guess, at least. I mean, if you are structuring it in like, I mean, he's just doing it as a question. But I think, I mean, you can just do so, so many interesting things. I mean, especially when it is about questions. What I'm seeing there is like, um, well, when I read like, okay, you know, isn't that true too? question mark? I mean, it is a question. But you could also just say something like, okay, you know, and and I know you know this, that this is true because you're smart. You know, first of all, it is a question. Second of all, yeah, um, it is a compliment, but an indirect one. And it is like you're using their words and, and just you confirm that they're good. So they then also think they're good. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a pretty interesting structure, I think. But But I think kind of the good thing is, I think question general is a good thing. Not necessarily as a statement. Because state nah. I feel like a question feels more like just listening to somebody. If it is a if it is a statement, then it is just what you think. But if it is a question, it's like you think that this person thinks. Quite. You know, if I just can communicate that in a good way. 
So for me, in, in this particular uh, example especially, but I, as I'm also thinking about different uh, situations there, I think and I believe that questions are better there than statements. And I've just know that in very recent times, I've also done something similar. So speaking off of somebody's mind, but I've just put it into a statement. And um, I, it, it would have been actually pretty funny if I've just uh, uh, just just asked it. Even though I think you also have to be a little bit conscious about not driving them into a corner and not just asking them a question that is going to make them feel like, you know, uh, yeah, and a little bit uncomfort- uncomfortable and stuff. So, so also something to think about, I guess. Can you think of a situation you could use this in? These techniques can be used in any relationship at work, home, with friends, and also with family. This level of honesty can be disarming and very useful. Yes, indeed, disarming putting out there in the open. So I think that this and that is that. I think that they don't really like me. You know, is there something about that? Well, yeah. But I, I mean, as I'm thinking about, like, rather than asking, like, you know, I, I just, um, I know that you don't like me. You could say something like, um, like just putting it into a question. Um, I mean, like, you know, me texting you all the time, it's, it's a little bit like just bordering you, isn't it? I mean, first of all, it's different words, of course. <laughs> it, just because of that, it sounds differently. But I have to think about that. I have to think about that a bit, a, a tiny little bit. But the next one is going to be being vulnerable. And I just see coming that it is going to be a good one. Show them your neck and they will want to show you theirs. This is an easy one that I think we all understand, but could use a reminder on now and then. Being vulnerable is one way to help other connect with you. Because of mirror neurons, when you share your vulnerabilities with others, they will feel what you're feeling and you will want to help you and and will want to help you. This means that you should be honest about mistakes, be honest about your fears and reach out for, for help when you need it. If you try to cover up your mistakes or your fears, then people will be less likely to help you and less likely to be understanding when you do screw up, so be honest. This honesty can move people from rooting against you to rooting for you. And I, I gotta have to say, like, I mean, I mean, I mean there's, there's, there's different, uh, different ways of being vulnerable, at least at my point of view, as I'm thinking about it. But, you know, well, yeah, you know, think about it on your own. It would actually be nice to just hear your thoughts on that. Uh, you can hit me up everywhere or you could just write down into the comments, you know, as always. Um, First of all, you can make us a vulnerable by just um, telling people secrets and telling people like just some stuff that you did. So this is a vulnerability. Second of all, you can tell them how you feel about them, how you feel about different situations. Um, third of all, which you know might be kind of a secret, but just some really personal stuff like, okay, I mean, this happened to me today and yesterday and this and that and these and those. And just, just showing... I mean, you can show it in a way to make yourself vulnerable because they now have information, but um, you can also make yourself vulnerable to them by, by, by just really indeed being honest about why you're doing things. I mean, like, you know, I, I'm just texting you because I really, truly like you and I care about you. This is also a, a form of vulnerability, which I think doesn't necessarily then mean that they're also going to be like, whoa, yeah, I care about you as well, because they might just really don't care. <laughs> you know, <laughs> as sad as it might be, but you know, the chance is pretty high. I would say it's 50 50, even though I think with the right communication, you can lower it a little bit to, I don't know, 70 30 or some shit. It depends. But I think, and I might also try that out. I might also try that out. What is, what if I do that? You know, I just, you know, want to ask you how you're doing because I really care about you. But the thing is, I mean, it also just depends on the language because I know I, I've just been translating that into German in my head and it already sounds so fucking dumb and shit. And I don't like that. Like, and I'm saying this quite often, to be honest. Like, if I think about something in English, it is just really cool. It feels differently than if I'm just saying it in German. Maybe also because I do have a different relationship to English than I'm having to German. Um, but it could also just be about the language. I think that there is definitely going to be some uh, differences. This honesty can move people from rooting against you to rooting for you. Yes. Then we're going to have transactional versus transformational questions. Listening to people isn't only about opening your ears. When you want to show people that we are uh, that we are interested in what they have to say, we'll also prompt them with questions. These questions can be transactional. Where did you go with these shoes? Where did you get these shoes? Do you know where I can find a pen? 
and all different sorts of questions. Or these questions can be transformational. Do you find it hard working remotely in different time zones from the rest of the team? I know you're a really awesome cook. What got you started in the first place? This, by the way, is a very good indirect compliment, I gotta have to say. You know, and I'm just calling it like this right now. There's probably like a different name, if you will. Um, but yeah, but I know you're a really awesome cook. You're a really good cook. You're just a perfect cook. So do you have some tips for me? I know you're good at this. I know you're good at that. So can, can you help me? Transformational questions are questions that they need to stop and think to answer. This type of deeper interest in a person can make relationships more personal, which can help move person from considering to willing to do. Yes, I know. Well, how did you, how are you doing? But I think it also, I mean, if you know the person, you can also just uh, use some other things. You know, you're not going to ask, you know, how you're doing, but you're going to make something funny out of it. Like, you know, I, I just thought like, I don't know, like you could use just some insiders, you could use some, some, some references and just whatnot, which already makes the whole thing different and, and maybe more interesting. So just, you know, I don't know, some references to a series, some references to a book, some references to uh, a previous conversation that you've had with the person or just some, some background of the person, whatnot. And, and yeah, but I just try to figure out what, what you could say instead of, you know, how are you doing? Do you find it hard working remotely? Different? I know you're a really awesome cook. What? Blah, 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 blah. Like, this is indeed a good question, you know, and, and how are you doing? It's like, uh, I'm going to say I'm feeling good anyway, you know? So I think there's, there's probably going to be different ways of just asking, like, how do you do? What's going on? You know, I've wondered how you feel. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I kind of have to think about that because I guess and believe that there is a way better way. Gulston writes, Crafting a transformational question is simple. Ask yourself, what single questions will show this person that I'm interested in this person, ideas, interests, future successes, or life, and then ask it. Well, <laughs> transactional questions and conversations are simply less memorable than transformational ones. They don't necessarily leave the other person feeling negatively, but they don't move your relationship forward. Transformational questions will help you uh, move your relationship forward, which can help you move through the persuasion cycle. And I just think, and and it bothers me quite a bit because I want to read through that and want to go through it and not think about it. <laughs> <laughs> not think about what I, what, what I could say in, instead of, how are you doing? Ask yourself, what single question will show that this person that I'm interested, will show this person that I'm interested in this person's ideas, interests, future success, and whatnot, or life? I mean, yeah, I mean, as I'm thinking about, like, you could also say, like, yeah, um, but I think it also just depends really on a person, like, if you know that the person just does not want to have an endless conversation then then just also do something different like you know um yeah i hope that you did something uh well i this would actually be a quite of a cool one i know i hope that you've done something pretty cool today that's making you feel good how are you feeling because this is something different nobody asks you that shit but i think <laughs> but i think something to think about is also like um don't ask some really fucking dumb ass complicated question like you know what do you think about quantum mechanics or whatnot? Physics. So, so it, it should, I think, in the end, make the person feel good about themselves, about their thoughts, about their feelings, about their whatever. Um, I kind of have to try all these things out that I'm having in my mind. And I just, I, I truly like that. I truly like, like, um, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to try it out and see what's happening. You know, communicating to other people, saying this, saying that, what is going to happen. Um just making a design, just seeing if it is working, just having an idea in general and seeing if it is working, if it just makes sense. I really like that. Uh, the power of thank you. Saying thank you is something we learn from a young age. As a kid, my mom always forced me to sit down and write thank you notes for any gifts I received on my birthday or any holidays. Of course, I was a good practice. It was a good practice to get in the habit of saying thank you. Okay. Gulson writes about how to thank you. Some of... Uh, uh, writes about how to thank someone for something they did for you that really meant a lot. Saying thanks falls into transactional bucket, but a power thank you can be transformational. Here are the three parts of the power of thank you. Thank the person for something specific that a person did for you. Acknowledge the effort it took for the person to help you by saying something like, I know you didn't have to do, do blah, 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 or I know you went out for your 
uh, out of your way to do blah, 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 blah. Tell a person the difference that their act personally made to you. And I think, I, I mean, I think this also has something to do with being vulnerable, like just showing more of your life. I did this, I did that, I have struggled with this, but you helped me. Makes sense. Makes sense. Here's an example. Imagine a, co imagine a co-worker stays up late to pull together data for a project presentation you're working on. I wanted to thank you for staying up to get all of that data together for me. I know that, I that you missed your night class to stay here and get it all done and I really appreciate it. The presentation turned out amazing today because you and everyone uh, really wants to move forward with the project. There's no way that I could have done this without all the data you pulled together. Thank you so much. And this feels good. It feels good. It's, it's like, thank you. It's like, mm, I don't care, actually, but thank you. If you can offer uh, your apology in a group setting, the larger the audience, the larger the impact. Yes, because also vulnerability. Um, these are some of the major points that stood out to me in the book, but there are many, many others. I would definitely recommend this book to anyone looking to build strong relationships or looking to get through to more people. If you're interested in more, here's Mark Goulston on This Week in Startups. And there's a video. You can pick out a book here on Amazon. Just listen. Thank you for reading Ezra. Pretty cool. Uh, even though I've just seen some two typos, typos, I guess. Uh, pretty cool one. And pretty interesting one as well. And I hope you're recording. Yes, everything seems to be fine. So I think I'm going to end the episode there. The question of today, the question of today is, could he say something? Could he make something? Could you build something? Could you create something that you know is going to transform the other person's life? Could you do that? And if yes, why don't you do it? But yeah, I wish you the best health of happiness and also success and also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy and uh, basically means just being remembered as a nice person, which is, I think, always a good thing and which is always something that I at least believe and also assume maybe it's more or less hope that people think about and also want to have. Anyway, I also have three other questions for you, which is or are why are you here? What are you trying to change? And what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea in the end. And, you know, hopefully purpose, an additional thing would be the business idea, which is a good thing. But of course, you have to execute on it anyway. So, yeah. And hopefully see you the next time. Maybe consider subscribing to the podcast. I would appreciate that. And I'll see you the next time. I at least hope. So I wish you the best. And I'll hopefully see you. Bye bye. I'm repeating myself over and over again. But I can't end the episode there quite. But I could just have a look at you. Attention. I'm able to access data on this device. Okay, cool. I don't care. Um, yeah. I'll see you. Thank you.